Back in the early days of the 2010s. I think back and remember them again. Let's see, it was 2013. My car broke down, it was mean, it was sad. The engine block was cracked, it was gone. So I thought this would be a perfect opportunity to use some more renewable energy. So I looked at the different cars that were around. I saw the leaf find the sun. It was not made on this USA ground. So I thought, well, we might have the Ford Focus. Too much hocus pocus. But then I looked, and what did I see? The Bolt. It was available right away. So I went to the dealership and I knocked on the door. What for? And I said, I heard you got the bolt in. They said, let's show you the floor. It looked pretty good. Three miles a kilowatt hour and it had gasoline on board just in case you got stuck far from an outlet. But then I saw the sticker price. No, it was not nice. So all I could do was go out on the lawn and start singing this song. Won't you overcharge? Won't you overcharge? I'd love to be so carbon free, but my wallet ain't that large. Unless I win the lottery, you won't be seeing my garage. Volt, you overcharge. Just so you know, that story was totally fictitious and brought to you for the express purposes of this mnemonic right here. In fact, I happen to know that the Nissan Leaf is an excellent vehicle, so is the Ford Focus, and in fact, the Chevy company, they're coming out with the Bolt with a B, which will get 200 miles on a charge and will be in my price range. Welcome back. We're here to deal with the very, very useful topic of electric potential, also called voltage. Uh, very similar to work and energy, it can be a lot easier to solve problems with electric potential. And that's because electric potential is a scalar instead of a vector. We can actually represent all the same electric fields completely using electric potential, except we can do it without any vectors, which makes life a whole lot easier. So let's go ahead and start with some important prior knowledge. Uh, an electric field points to the right like this. Which way is the force on a positive charge that you put in that field? Well, if you just remember that the electric field direction is defined by the direction of force on a positive charge, you will realize that it points to the right. The force points to the right. How about if you had a negative charge right in that field? Well, then you'd have to realize that it points to the left. So positive charges naturally fall downhill to lower potentials, while negative charges actually fall uphill. Got a little demo to help us remember this. This red sphere right here, which represents positive charge, it rolls downhill. And now what I mean downhill, I really mean to lower electric potentials. We'll see what all this means momentarily. Now, the interesting thing is that negative charges actually fall uphill. Let's do a brief review of gravitational potential energy, uh, which is very, very similar to electric potential energy, which is what voltage is related to. So gravitational potential energy, UG, is negative G, big M, little m, over R, where uh, G is the gravitational constant, m is one mass, little m is another mass, over R being the center to center distance. Now this is only true if you set U, or gravitational potential energy, equal to zero, where? It must be set equal to zero at R equals infinity. Similarly, electric potential energy is K, Coulomb constant, charge one, charge two, over the center to center distance between them. Uh, also, uh, only true if you set uh, R equals infinity to where we're going to set uh, electric potential energy to zero. 
Now, you might ask, why is this one negative and this one is positive? Now, when you have gravitational attraction, all masses are positive, so they attract. But what do two charges of the same sign do? They repel. So what we have to do is, to make this equation work where there are both positive and negative charges, you've got to remove the negative sign. Thus, uh, only opposite charges attract. So if you've got two positive charges next to each other, they have positive potential energy. It simply means they want to run away from each other until they're infinitely far away. Now, you would not be able to have positive potential energy with gravitational potential energy because all masses attract. All masses attract and want to move away from infinity towards each other. So you can't actually have positive potential energy with masses. In other words, gravitational potential energy can never be positive if you set infinitely far away as zero potential energy. Whereas electric potential energy can be positive or negative depending on the signs of these charges. Let me explain a little bit more what I mean by this. This is a plot of gravitational potential energy of a test mass caused by two masses that are in the xy plane. So we're looking parallel to the xy plane right here. Here's the x uh, direction and the y direction is now directed up like that. So now we're looking down into the xy plane. And uh, if there are two gravitational objects sitting in that xy plane, this is a plot uh, in the third dimension, the z-axis shows their gravitational potential energy of a mass brought near them. Now notice that this xy plane is would be zero gravitational potential energy, and you'll notice that it's always underneath that plane because gravitational objects always cause negative potential energies, and we can actually use kind of gravity as an analogy for gravity. You can imagine that an object sitting right here in the xy plane, an object sitting right here in the xy plane, uh, objects nearby would want to fall into them, and they, you know, you can imagine like kind of falling down into a hole, but really they'd be attracted right to the object which is sitting right there. But this shows the gravitational potential energy of a, you could say, a one kilogram object nearby. Notice it's always negative, and notice that uh, it never, in this graph, never quite reaches zero potential energy. Where would it have to be on this graph to actually reach zero potential energy, which would be exactly in this xy plane, in other words, with z equal to zero? How far away from this uh, center line would we have to be? Well, if you'd guess that we'd have to be at r equals infinity, you can see it's getting, if we look at it from this angle, you can see it's getting closer to zero as we get farther away because this line here would be z equals zero, or the gravitational potential energy equals zero. It gets closer to that, but it never gets there. It'll get there at infinity. In contrast, this represents an electric dipole in the xy plane, i.e. a positive charge and a negative charge. Notice that a positive test charge could have both positive or negative potential energy near these charges. So this represents a positive charge in the xy plane. This represents a negative charge in the xy plane, and this is a graph of the electric potential, or you could say electric potential energy of a positive test charge. So notice that we have kind of like a, a hill where things can have positive potential energy, but they can also have negative potential energy down here. And you'll notice that right in between these two, the potential energy is zero. And there's actually a line right here, if you look at it sideways, there's a whole region, I'm looking right at it right now, where all the way into the page and out of the page, the electric potential energy is zero. So you can have zero potential energy at other places besides infinity, and there's actually a line right here that's at right in the xy plane, and it goes out to infinity this way and out to infinity that way, because you can have zero potential energy at other places besides infinity. You can have things that are higher potential energy than zero, you can have them at zero, you can have it lower potential energy than zero. Electric potential energy can be positive or negative. Now let's learn some uh, very valuable mnemonics for, for electric field and electric potential. Some of these we've already learned. So now the definition of electric field, you may remember this, but this is a good review. The definition of electric field. If you get a job in engineering, especially electrical engineering, uh, the Association of Electrical Engineers will get mad at you if you don't use the standard fee scale. They want to keep prices high. Uh, so if you are in the electric field, you are forced 
to overcharge. That's just a mnemonic for the electric field is defined as the force per unit charge. Similarly, we have a similar relationship for electric potential. Now the mnemonic for this one is that uh, when I was car shopping, when I had to get a new car, I was like, all right, I'm going to get an all electric. I was so psyched. I went to the Chevy dealership to look at the Volt. And uh, what uh, kind of shocked me was that uh, the sticker price was $50,000. Volt, you overcharge. <laughs> and that is the definition of electric potential. Volt, the voltage or electric potential is the uh, potential energy per unit charge. It is in joules per coulomb. And this is a very useful relationship, but it only works if you have defined where V equals zero. And you usually do this at R equals infinity. Otherwise, you have to have deltas in front of this V and a delta in front of the U. That is true no matter what, but this will be true if you've defined where V or the electric potential equals zero. Volt, you overcharge.